when I was seven years old, something, you know, my, I have an older brother and older sister, and they were, you know, when they have time together, they're kind of older than me, and I got a chance to sit around one day, and some people said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I wasn't sure, but something said to me, you want to be among the stars. And I didn't know what that meant. I really thought it meant, like, being an astronomer, or you know, I'm going to be an astronaut, or something like that. But it kind of gave, gave me a rule to go on, to keep following. What does being among the stars mean? So I, I got into the theater. The theater was great. I went to the high school performing arts, the school that's based on fame. I went to fame high school. That was fantastic. I went to college. I still was like, what does this mean? Maybe I want to be in entertainment. Uh, I wasn't sure. It literally, uh, a flyer hit my foot, and it was the Warner Brothers writing program comes to Morgan State University, which is in Baltimore. So I picked it up and my bells went off writing for television. And I figured I had the acting experience, I had uh, gone into college for communications, and I thought maybe there's something to this. So when I got into the program, the writing program at my school, bells went off. It was like, this is it, this feels right, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna try it. And, and so that whole idea of, of uh, being amongst the stars kind of clicked in, but still. How was I going to get to Hollywood? I was a kid. I didn't have a family. Had a background with lots of money. I barely got through school. I had job. I had three jobs to get through school. Um, I was not a great student. I was about a C plus, maybe a B minus average student. Um, and it was it was tough. I could have done better in school, but I had to keep my jobs. But in the back of my mind was that whole idea of I wanted to be among the stars. And I wasn't sure what that meant. But I thought if I be, you know, if I continue to take this road, maybe it'll, I'll go into Hollywood. So six months after high, after college, I said to myself, I have got to go to Hollywood. If that's what I'm gonna do, writing is, is the way to get into this, I'm gonna go. And all the time I'm thinking, I'm not exactly sure how God is using me. I went to Catholic school, as a you know, first to grade, eighth grade, and I had that instilled in me that whatever my mission was was going to be included in what God wanted to do for me, or what I, I mean, what God wanted me to do for Him, and how I was going to work for Him. So I kept that in mind. I'm thinking television. There's no God in TV. They don't do that. That's that's unheard of. So I'll make a long story short. Six months after I got out of college. I came to California, and I was doing everything and anything that I could to get on the sets. You know, out here in Hollywood, it's tough. I think do you all know how tough it is to get onto a lot and get into the business? It's tough. You gotta know somebody. I don't know anybody. Uh, again, my family didn't know what it meant to be in Hollywood. They don't know why I had this crazy dream to be a Hollywood writer. But I kept going, and. I just did anything, and then suddenly, while I'm here for two weeks, I met some people who went to my college, and actually, so ironic that someone was inviting me here to speak from my school, from, from college. But um, I got invited to a party, and uh, he said, "Hey, why don't you come on to uh, an internship?" There was three of us. He was picking from my college, which was also his alum, um, to come to the. Uh, to come and work on the show that he was working on. And it was a show called Hang With Mr. Cooper. So I worked for two weeks on that show. It was an ABC show, it was a family show, it was great. I was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed every day. I was like, I'm gonna do this. And you know, he was paying us $250. And out of the three of us, he was gonna try and do the best that he could to keep us going in business. Uh, shorter story long, um, I, the, the two weeks was over. I had written, rewritten my script that I had done at school. Um, my professor at school gave us rave reviews, you know, that we had done great. And the guy who was at um, in Hollywood had gone to Morgan, and Morgan, this professor at Morgan was just, you know, pushing us along and saying that we should try to continue. But there was really no room. So after the two weeks were over, I was back at it again. What am I going to do? How am I going to make it? He, uh, someone on the set, messing up, wasn't doing good, uh, got fired. And it was a production assistant. 
So I'm walking up and down Hollywood, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do next. Uh, I went to every studio, possibly, that I could get to and give out my resume, like I thought was the normal thing. And, you know, I was staying with a woman who said, who's a travel agent, she said, I'll get you a flight back. If you wanna go home, I'll let you go. And so I was praying to God, I'm like, God, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm beating, I'm pounding the pavement, I'm giving out my, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. God, what else, what else am I supposed to do? And so I, you know, I kind of gave up. I said, look, I don't have any more money. I'm here on a credit card. It's not even mine, it's my brother's. I have to go home. Lo and behold, I'm supposed to leave on Friday. On Wednesday, I got a call from him, Mr. Cooper, the production office. And he said, Doreen, we love you. We thought you were great. We, we love your energy. We love you. You're coming and work on our show. Would you, would you take it? Of course, I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm coming, I'm coming. So I worked as a production assistant. I did everything from get bagels, fetch coffee, did all of that. Um, but my idea was to get to be a writer. And that same year, I got to write on a show called Martin. That was great for me. I got my Writer's Guild card. I was in. I was going to do my thing. And here I am, I'm a Hollywood writer, but I'm still saying to myself, how am I going to serve what I'm doing? Where, you know, where, where are those places for people who want to instill uh, in kids' minds that they should follow their dreams? And so I then worked from there. I went to the freshman to Bel Air. I was an executive assistant there for six months, worked with Will Smith, and the whole cast was wonderful people. I worked on the Jamie Foxx show. Uh, learned everything that I could. I worked as a writer's assistant. I worked as a production assistant, executive assistant. <clears throat> and then came again. I'm out of work. I didn't know what to do. And I did everything to stay alive in the business. I ended up going to be a, uh, a, uh, a, a receptionist or as, at some place. And I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this here, I can go back to New York. I don't, I don't need to be here. I, I love my home. I love New York. L.A. was really hard for me. So I said, God, I, I have to go home. I don't know what else to do. I don't, I don't want to lose my dream. But I, 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 I'm afraid. I don't want to be without my family anymore. So I got a call, and somebody was saying, hey, uh, have you ever written for animation? And I said, no, but, you know, I'll try it. And so um, I actually let me back up. When I was thinking about when I was thinking about going home, I wasn't sure. I got a call while I was in, while I was working on a show, and this kid was from college, and he was saying, "Can you come and speak to my school? You know, a lot of students." And I said, "Sure, I'll go." And from there, I was in Philadelphia. There was another person who was speaking, and that person ended up being the person who called me when I was out of work to see if I wanted to write on an animated show. And that guy was Bruce Smith. So again, I did this, I wrote the pilot, I did everything. Two years later, still working as a receptionist, I'm struggling, I'm like, oh gosh, I gotta get out of here, I wanna go back to New York. And I did go home. And the guy kept calling me saying, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. But in my mind, I'm like, it's taking too long. It's been two, almost two and a half years. I told my parents, I said, I love my dream. I don't, I don't know where it was going to lead me, but I wasn't sure. But I'm coming home. And I cried so hard. I cried because I wanted it really bad. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And that same day, 20 minutes later, I get a call. And the guy said, hey, the Proud family's been picked up for 22 episodes. Uh, so when, whenever you're ready to come back, we're ready to work. I didn't believe him. I was like, okay, that's nice, Mom. I'm going to go back to New York. And he's like, no, 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 you got to come back. And so I came back to work at 22 episodes. And um, my name is Doreen Spicer, and I'm glad that I was here to talk to the kids today uh, because it is important that they keep their God-given purpose in mind as they're going along in, in their journey um, so that they'll know what their life is all about, what their purpose is for life, and how they can impact society with their, with their work. So I think this is a great thing that uh, GROW is doing, and I'm really, really proud to be a part of that. For anyone who, who feels like they are at a disadvantage, whether it's monetarily or um, because they're a woman,
there are roadblocks out there and there's something that you just can't let get in the way. There are ways around them and most of all it's part part of life. It makes you stronger and the biggest thing is you have to know that there's something out there for you to do and you have to know that it is, it is your God-given right that you can get anything and have anything that you want in life. You just have to constantly keep going, not let anything get in your way and stay strong-minded Pray as much as you possibly can because if you have nothing else, if you don't have a friend, you have a mother, father, anyone to listen to you, you have God. And the best thing to do is when you pray to God, sit for a moment and listen and he will talk to you and tell you exactly what you need to do.